Okay, everyone. Today we're going to take a look at an introduction to complex numbers. Okay, now we're going to start off with the basics. Complex numbers are very relatable to quadratic functions and functions we do in the future, like polynomial functions, cubics, cortex, all those different kinds. But first we're going to talk about the basics before we learn how to apply them to those functions. So when you write a complex number, it's written in the form of a plus b i. Okay, so we're going to define what that i means a little bit later in this video, but for right now, this is how you write a complex number. And this is true for when a and b are reals. Okay? So let's think about that for a minute. We're now going to be talking about a whole new different number system. Now when you first started out learning about the numbers, and when mathematicians first started out thinking about numbers, they start out very simple and then move further and further and further into things that are more complex. So for example, everybody first started out with the naturals, right? the positive integers, so the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Then all of a sudden, after that came the integers. Okay, that was when people were saying, oh, well now I have negative numbers too. Now I've learned how to do subtraction. Now after we thought about the integers, we then got introduced to the rationals. Right, so first it was, first I have one apple, then two apples, then three apples. Then I learned what happens if I subtract out apples from apples. Then I learned what happens if I have half an apple or a third of an apple, or if I add a half of an apple plus a third of an apple. What do I have? Okay? Then we're getting more fancy. So after the rationals came the reals. So all the other numbers as well, right? So um, the reals include irrational numbers like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 and the square root of 5 and pi and all that stuff. So then, once we surpass the reals, we get into what we call the complex numbers. So if you can see from this diagram, the complex numbers are actually the largest number system. Okay? So the question is, true or false, the real numbers are contained in the complex numbers. So what does your gut tell you about that? That is true, right? Because think about it. If you look at the complex number a plus bi, well, a is the real part, and bi is what we call the imaginary part, okay? Now, if the imaginary part is zero, meaning that if b is zero, then it's true that every real number could be written as a complex number. So for example, five could be written as five plus zero i. Therefore, I'm making five an element of the complex numbers. So this is true. The reals are contained in the complex numbers, meaning that the complex number system is the largest system of numbers. It contains all of the numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at what I actually means. Now, by definition, what happened was that people needed a way to be able to take the square root of negative numbers. Okay, so for a long time, we've been saying to you that you are not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. Now that's true, because that means that a real number squared cannot be something negative. Okay, so you cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real number. However, you can take the square root of a negative number and get a complex number. Okay, so by definition, the square root of negative 1 is defined to be i. It's defined to be imaginary. Okay, so now a lot of ideas and a lot of things are going to stem from this definition. So let's take a look at something general. 
if I have the square root of negative a, now that is going to be, uh, this is only going to work if a is in the reals and a is greater than zero, okay? Right? Because if I said that a was negative, then I'd end up getting a positive in that radical, okay? So by definition right now, we have a being a real number and it being positive, okay? So I can take this square root of negative a and I can change that to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of a. Now by definition, i is the square root of negative 1. So this becomes i root a. So when you're taking the square root of a negative number, you then turn it in to this complex number. So something that's written like this can now be rewritten as that. So let's take a look at an example. If I have something like the square root of negative 4, you know that by definition, that means i root 4. Okay, now you know the square root of 4. What is that? 2. So I can rewrite that as 2i. So if I have something like the square root of negative 63, that's i root 63. Now you could leave it like that if you want. However, you could reduce that radical of 63. You learn how to do this in geometry, right? What's a perfect square that divides into 63? That would be 9, 7. So this is really 3i root 7. Okay? So those are some examples. Now remember that you can leave it like this if you want to. This is also an acceptable answer. Something else that's really cool that we can take a look at is what happens when I square i. So remember, by definition, i equals the square root of negative 1. So what would happen if I squared that? Well, isn't that just the square root of negative 1 squared? Or root negative 1 times root negative 1? Well, what do you think happens if I square something that has a square root on it? You're absolutely right. What happens is that that square root and that squared will cancel. Those are inverse operations. So I just get negative 1. So another cool property of complex numbers is that i squared is negative 1. There are also other powers of i that you're going to talk about in the classwork, and there are also other complex numbers that multiply to give us a real number. Now, what do you think that might equal? A lot of people might think that that equals the square root of 8, okay? Because negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. However, you know that that has to be false. Okay, now here's why. You can rewrite this by definition as i root 2 and this by definition as i root 4, which means that this is really i squared times root 8. So what's true is that root negative 2 times root negative 4 is i squared times root 8. So you need to be careful because this square root of negative 2 and square root of negative 4 are not real numbers to begin with. Okay, so a property of multiplying numbers inside a radical isn't going to work in this case until you rewrite it, such as down here. Okay, so now let's take a look at one more example using some set notation. 
let's say I gave you this function. Okay, and I want you to define the elements of set one where x is in the reals such that f of x equals zero. Okay, now we looked at this in the very beginning of the chapter. So you would say to me, okay, I'm going to figure out what this is. So I'm going to set x squared plus 4 equal to 0. I'm going to get that x squared equals negative 4, so x equals plus or minus root negative 4. Now when this happened, you said, okay, well, that's not a real number. Therefore, s1 is the null set, which is, of course, true. But what if I defined s sub 2? to be x in the complex set of numbers, such that f of x equals 0. Well, think the exact same way, and you get down to here. And you say, well, I know now that by definition, root negative 4 is 2i, plus or minus. That's two solutions. So. 2i is in the set of complex numbers. Therefore, your elements in S2, or S sub 2, is negative 2i and positive 2i. So now you've got to see very specifically that since you're in a new set of numbers, you've got all these new sets of rules. Okay, good luck everyone.